There are a lot of problems with the way we've organized our occupation of the landscape. Some of them are logistical, social, even spiritual problems. And some of them are ecological and economic problems. Any way of life that's based on the use of non-renewable resources and based on the hyper-exploitation of renewable resources, so-called, any way of life that perceives the world around them as consisting of resources and not beings and communities to enter into these reciprocal relationships with is going to destroy its land base. This culture has been destroying its land base for the last 6,000 years. That's not very smart on a finite planet. We're really fucked. It's basically, these trees are like the structure, they're like the, 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 the scaffolding that holds up the whole house of a healthy ecosystem. I can say it in words, you can watch it on TV, if you walk through a tree plantation, where almost all the trees are of the same age, almost all the trees are of the same species, they were planted there by humans, they were developed genetically to be what human beings wanted to have and you see what grows there, you see what lives there, you see what it feels like. You walk out of that and you walk into an old growth forest that is exactly what used to be where that tree plantation was. It's like a line that runs sometimes, a line where they drew and they said, cut here, not there yet. You walk across that line and you're back on earth. Machines come back after a certain number of years, cut it all down, do it again, and pretend like they can do that over and over. Just like the early farmers in America pretended that they could grow crops without fertilizing until the dust bowl came. So we deplete the soil, we grow the tree farm, and all the species are gone. Sometimes they're gone in that they just shifted to another place in the forest, but sometimes they're gone forever. And that's extinction. And extinction is not death, it's the end of birth. It doesn't come back ever. When I started writing Ishmael, I knew that we were attacking the biological diversity of the planet, but I had no idea that we had already entered into a period of mass extinctions. It's estimated that as many as 200 species a day are becoming extinct. This is roughly a thousand times the normal rate of extinction. There, of course, have been extinctions throughout the history of life on the planet, but this is what is meant by a mass extinction, like happened in the late Permian period when the dinosaurs disappeared. The historical assumptions we have about the, quote, great buildings of the world the Egyptian pyramids, the European and Asian fortresses, the great and marvelous metropolises that we see around us. They're expressions of a civilization and they're great records, okay, but what are they records of? In fact, in most cases, um, they were created by the oppression of others. And in, in, in some cases, the downright slavery of, of generations and generations of people. And so you think, well, what's so important and valuable about that. What does that mean to us now? You know, we're still doing that today. I think Buckminster Fuller summed it up pretty well with the idea of uh, energy slaves, where we have, um, you know, energy has been, become so cheap um, and it does a lot of work for us. Um, and if you were to convert the kind of 
the relationship between the amount of energy that each of us use in the city and, and this kind of way of living, um, if you were to compare that energy to the amount of human energy it would have taken in the form of slaves working for us, um, each one of us would have at our disposal something like 400 slaves. Now this was 1960-some-odd when Fuller first calculated this. I would guess it's probably double or triple that by now. But like uh, My guess is I'd probably got you know a thousand energy slaves working for me, doing all this kind of work for me. Um, that's absolutely not sustainable. There's a lot of different reasons that our normal lives are things that we need to look at and change. For example, our normal life is ecologically unsustainable. I mean, we are destroying the life support systems of the planet. Our normal life also creates huge disparities in health and wealth, which these are both really important issues. They're not anything that are, that's going to cause us to change society or change the structure of the system. Now, this whole normal life being underwritten by cheap and abundant fossil fuels, this concept right here, that could lead to change. Oil being a finite substance will come to some point where it actually hits a maximum level, then it goes into a declining. At that point where it starts to go into decline, we're going to have to figure out how to make do with less. We don't know how to do that. A lot of people have very high hopes, uh, you might even call them wishes, that technology is going to come to the rescue and solve these energy problems we have and actually allow us to continue running our stuff the way we're running it. No combination of alternative energy systems is going to allow us to run North America the way we've been used to running it or even a substantial fraction of it. We're going to have to downscale and rescale and resize and right size and reorganize all of these systems. When do we run out? And of course the answer to that is very disturbing because it's, it's not really a matter of when we run out, but when we are no longer able to continue the path of growth, when we're no longer able to have more fossil fuels with every passing year to fuel more shopping malls, more cars, more highways. And that time is basically now. America's housing infrastructure is extremely vulnerable to the problem of peak oil. We've built millions of houses that have to be heated with fossil fuels. So how are we going to heat all of these houses? Most of us are living in places that get really cold in the winter. I mean, you really can freeze to death in places like Iowa and Minnesota and upper New York State. So we're going to have to figure out an alternative to the standard American house and do it really quickly. We need to reinvent our normal lives so that they are not only ecologically sustainable and not only socially just, but we need to make them much, much less dependent on fossil fuels.